Welcome to day number four here of the Digital Dropshipping Bootcamp. Today is day four store. Um, this is usually one of the things people find most interesting about digital dropshipping. So I think you'll probably get a lot of value out of this video. And um, let's go ahead and just get into it because this one's going to be pretty straightforward. We're going to talk about, uh, well, I'm going to show you, we're going to go through everything here, but uh, we're going to talk about which platform to choose. We're going to do um, theme. We're going to do back-end setup. We're going to do one-page lander, landing page for your digital product. And then number five, like final setup. There's like some different settings and things like that um, that we'll go through. Now, look, people will ask me here of, you know, which platform, this, that. And look, I got students that sell on, you know, multiple different platforms. You know, some people decide to choose to sell on whatever they want to sell on. But... I only teach what I've done and what I've got experience with. So like, you know, one of my students right here, David, he's one of my students who's always followed instructions, done what I told him, and look at the results he's getting. I mean, this was earlier today uh, for his ebook uh, store. He said, shop, shop, shop. Um, only 110 in ad spend, over 436 euros in sales. So that, I mean, that leaves a, a pretty good room, amount of room for profit. So good job to David. So if you're asking me, Tanner, should I use Etsy? Should I use this? Should I use that? Look, I'm going to tell you what I've used, gotten results with. And, you know, if you want results, then, I mean, just, just use what I say. Because it's the worst thing that happens when someone says, yo, Tanner, um, I'm not making sales. What do you think? And I'm like, bro, you, did, you didn't do what I told you to do. You literally skipped this thing. You, you did something else. Like, I can't, if you don't listen to what I'm saying and follow what I say to do, then how am I going to tell you why it's not working? To me, it's obvious why it's not working because you didn't follow what I said to do. So when it comes to the platform, look, I'm always going forward with Shopify. You know, um, Shopify right now you can start. I think I have a link in the description. I believe right now it's $1 for one month. Um, you can get started. Shopify, just think of it as the, uh, the heart of your business. So what keeps everything, it keeps everything pumping. It's what allows for people to visit your store. It allows for you to sell your products, manage everything, all the apps, all this stuff. Um, and I mean, that's, that's what I use. Now, I would never sell on a platform, let's say like Etsy, because Etsy one, if you're doing that, you're basically building Etsy's business. You know, um, you're selling on their platform. You're at the disgrace of their hands and their decisions. If they want to remove your listings, if they want to remove your account, they could do it. Uh, you're, if you're selling through there, you're going to have a bunch of fees. Uh, and it's a very commoditized platform. So most of the products being sold on there are lower ticket, like very cheap. And, you know, you're not really building your own brand. You're building Etsy's brand. And maybe you'll make a couple bucks, but I would much rather build my own business uh, where I can, you know, profit the most, build the most, you know, act, like build an actual business, you know. Um, that's really the, the point behind it because over time, after you learn these skills, you develop them and you make your first few sales, you'll start to, uh, you know, do bigger things. And it's hard to do that when you're on somebody else's platform. But when you have your own, you can do whatever you want. So that's why Shopify is just like a good back end that keeps everything smooth and everything running. So don't ask me to use a different thing. Should I use this? Should I use that? Listen to what I say. Okay. So let's say we're just using Shopify for this. The next thing is theme. So, uh, I mean, one cool thing about Shopify is, you know, your theme is just your, your exterior, the design of the website here. How does this actually uh, look at which one, which one should I choose? Tanner, should I spend the 360, 350, 320, 240, or should I get a free one? Well, listen to me right now. This is what you are going to do. You are going to choose a free theme, okay? So you could choose any of these. It honestly doesn't matter to me uh, which one you find the most attractive because it honestly is not going to make you know a big effect. After we get into creating your, your landing page, you'll see that it doesn't really matter. We're picking a free theme because we want the ability to choose uh, you know something that, that we want to use ourselves, that we like. Um, and... I mean, honestly, it's not even about liking it. Like, we're just choosing something here. So uh, I would say right now, you should choose Dawn. Dawn is going to be the, the simplest, most minimalist one. Um, don't even worry about design yet. We'll get into that. But what you're going to do is once you have your Shopify account open, you use the link in the description. It's an affiliate link. Um, then you can go here and get this free theme and add it to your store, Dawn. Now, why should I just buy this? Or why should I do a free theme instead of buying one that's already nice? Because we aren't going to be using like the typical things that you see on here. We're going to, to make it our own and use a you know converting strategy uh, to sell our digital product on it. So now what is going to be the next step after actually choosing the theme? Well, we talked about some of the back end settings, right? So how are we going to actually position this for our 
uh, you know, digital product and setting all of this up. And this is what I think you guys are going to, you know, find really interesting is this, uh, you know, kind of back end setup. So if I go over here onto Shopify, this is just like a, a little example store. It has my name on it. It's nothing crazy. Like it's just my name. Uh, this is where I send, I send my students these shirts and on here is where they can order it. Um, but anyways, once you have your Shopify account open and you're ready to, you know, start selling your digital product on here, the very next step is just adding the product itself. So if you go over here to products, you click add product on the top right, then you're going to see all this different stuff that you could do. So title should be self-explanatory. You put the title of uh, your, or the name of your product that you already came up with in the prior day. Media, just add one mock-up right now just as a placeholder. Like We can adjust that um, as we continue on. Just put a mock-up of your product or the cover. Um, and then pricing. Now, I want to touch on digital product pricing here real quick on kind of my formula behind it. Um, because remember, we, we've been talking about throughout this entire boot camp how you know, the more severe a problem is, the more you can charge for it. And since I have you starting out with a simple self-paced digital product, if you're watching this right now and you follow this bootcamp through the day so far, then you're probably selling some type of ebook, a digital planner, a digital journal, maybe some Canva templates, you know, things that uh, you're going to be selling for less than $50, like very self-paced, simple digital products, uh, because these are going to, you know, have the, the path of least resistance to getting your first sales, which all I want from this bootcamp is literally for you to make your first sale. That would be my ideal outcome. You might not think that sounds like crazy. Like, Tanner, why don't you promise me, like, I want to make 10K by the end of the seven days. No, bro, that ain't happening. So just stick with me here. When it comes to pricing, here's what I do. Let's say I'm selling a digital planner that's for nurses who want to pass their NCLEX, okay? Well, we know the product is now for a more specific, uh, you know, audience, and we're, we're catering that towards them. So we, can, we know we can charge more. It's more valuable than if we just sell a basic digital planner. But how can we use the existing digital planner market or ebook market to you know, hit the ground running once we do start marketing this product? Well, here's what I recommend. What I recommend doing is looking at, you know, back on Etsy, TikTok search, look for um, you know, listings for this type of digital product that you're selling, but don't search digital planner for you know, nurses that are trying to pass their NCLEX. No, just search up digital planner, the very general, basic, most basic general search term you can put for your digital product and just see, okay, the very general version of this, what, what is the actual amount these things are selling for? You can do a, you can do a, a, a real average. An average is where you take, let's say you find 20 different listings and they're all selling, you know, for 20, 25, 30, 32, whatever. And you add up, let's say 20 of these listings, you add up those numbers, then you divide it by 20 and that'll give you the average. But for this case, it really doesn't have to be exactly specific. Let me just see, let me say that I generally see, okay, digital planners are selling for $20. Let me just put that out there. Random number, $20. Okay, well, if I know that digital planners are actively selling, like I know they're selling for a fact because I can see, you know, on Etsy, let's say, that these things are actually selling at $20. Okay, well, how can I take advantage of this existing price point? without doing a race to the bottom. Because one of the worst things that people do when they get into this is they think, I'm just gonna charge a super small amount and it's gonna help me make sales. Or I'm just gonna charge less than what everybody else is selling it for because that's gonna mean that you know all the other buyers are just gonna start coming to me now. But the reality of that is you're just attracting price shoppers, the type of people that you know buy things on Etsy. You know, Have you ever seen something, like you wanted to buy something and you're like, oh, well, let me just go on Amazon and see if I can find it cheaper. And sometimes you find a variation that's cheaper. You know, that's the type of people that you're attracting if you're just pricing it lower than everybody else. And the cool thing with digital products that you have to understand is that we have an advantage. Since our product is for a specific audience, it has more perceived value and we can charge more for that and avoid the price shoppers, the people that are going to be headaches, the people that aren't going to use the product, the people that are going to ask for refunds. We want to avoid that at all costs. So don't price it less than the competition. Instead, what I do is I see, hey, the average digital planner is selling for $20. So you know what I'm going to do? Well... I'm gonna just charge you know, about 20% more. So 10% of two, uh, or 10% of 20 is two, 20% is $4. Let me just say, hey, I'm gonna charge $24.99 for this. You know, It's basically at a price point where I'm not trying to be a record breaker where I charge the most ever for a digital planner in all of history and try to make massive amounts of profit. No, I wanna take advantage of this existing price point that is proven to you know, have people buy at, but I'm gonna charge more because I know that I have a specific audience and the product is specifically for them. So there's more perceived value. Cool. Now I know that's what I want to do. And when it comes to pricing, just keep in mind, you know, um, 
usually what I'm doing in pricing, what just maybe it's a little superstition, a little bit of psychology, what works the best. I don't do whole numbers, so I don't charge $30. I don't charge $40. Um, what I'll typically do is if I'm going to be charging above a five, so let's say let's say twenty to thirty dollars, for example. If I'm going to be charging over twenty five dollars, I'm probably just going to do twenty seven dollars, something like that. Um, you know, twenty seven. Simple. If it's under twenty five, then I'll probably do something with a ninety nine. Like, okay, twenty four ninety nine, twenty two ninety nine. And for me personally, that's just what I've seen work the best in my own experience. So that's what you know, I, I recommend you follow as well, because I'm just teaching you what I've done, what I've gotten results with, and, you know, hopes that you can replicate it here with me and get your first sale. That's what I want to happen right here. Um, so after you, you come on here, you add your, the name of your product, you add a mock-up, you put your price. Um, personally, like this isn't advice, but personally, I uncheck this. Um, I don't add a cost. There's no cost. I uncheck track quantity because it's not a digital product. Um, I also uncheck this right here. This is a physical product because now what's going to happen is um, inside of the checkout, if you have this checked, it's going to require people to put their shipping address. But you uncheck this. Now they only have to do billing, which it just makes it simpler. Like you can just have the checkout with least amount of friction so people can go through and buy. Um, variance, size, color doesn't really apply unless you're doing a digital planner that has different styles. But ebooks and that kind of thing is usually just one time uh, or like there's one SKU. It's just one option. Um, and now once you've done this, you can click save. Well, let me put here, test, save. All right. Now, the next thing we need to do is automate our fulfillment, right? Because we want to make sure that the product can instantly be delivered to the customer. And what's going to be the easiest route for that? Well, there's an app called Easy Digital Products. And this one is by far, um, you know, the best option when it comes to uh, you know, things like ebooks and planners, things like this, like you can use this app to instantly deliver the product to people. So what this will do is it'll on the checkout, once people go through the purchase and they're on the confirmation or the thank you page, then what's going to happen is uh, they're going to be able to download the product on there. There's a little download button. It'll have them do that. And this app will also email the, the digital product to them, a download link so they can download the digital product. So this way you're making sure the person gets the product instantly after they buy. So you don't have to manually, you know, email it to them or anything like that. Uh, now this app, I believe is free to use for the first, what is this? 30 orders a month. And then after that, I think like if you wanted to, you do more volume and stuff, they charge more. Um, but I mean, what does it matter if you're, if you're making sales, you're making money. What does it matter if you have to pay a little bit more for an app to deliver the products instantly? I think it's much more valuable than the time you would spend manually sending this to customers. Uh, because, you know, the, the idea is people are going to buy this when you're sleeping. Like, that's the idea that over time you're building progress. People are going to buy when you're sleeping. And you're not going to be awake to send that product to them. But the person buying it, they want that product right now. So this is a way to make sure that that actually happens. And the way you do it is um, you go to the Shopify App Store. This is free. Um, and you can add it to your store. And then when you open it, it's going to look like this. And all you have to do is click here, create digital product variant. You type in your thing. So let me type in test. That's the one I just made. Okay, so this is my product. Pretend this is yours. Click pick product. And then, then what you do right here is you put your file. You literally just click this and you add your file, whatever the, the digital product is. Um, I don't do license key. I don't do this. Um, I, I just click then upload and save. And now what's going to happen is cool. The product is now going to be delivered to them as soon as they purchase, which is exactly what I'm looking to do. Um, and the app honestly is not really more complicated than that. It's pretty straightforward. Um, like the email that they receive, you can customize that if you want to, but this really just makes it like super, super simple. Um, so yeah, cool. Thanks. Easy digital product. Um, now the next thing here that I want to talk about is actually automating the or order fulfillment because what happens is some people, as they start making sales and they see over here in orders, there's like a number starts adding up. Like you see right here, 46. And they're like, Tanner, I thought it's supposed to instantly fulfill the order, like instantly deliver the, the product to the customer, but it says it's unfulfilled. How do I change that? All right, I'm going to explain it because it's actually pretty simple. Um, you're not using tracking numbers or anything like that. This app is delivering the product instantly. So how do you make sure that this thing actually says that it is fulfilling, fulfilling the orders? You go over here to settings, go over to checkout, then you scroll down here. And all you want to do is change this to automatically fulfill the orders line items. And then you click save. So basically now what's going to happen is as soon as someone orders, they're receiving the product immediately. 
plus it's going to show us fulfilled on your end here on the back end now this is maybe a little bit more like OCD, like you don't want to see this number on the side um, and have all these things say they're unfulfilled. Like personally, you just get peace of mind where it says fulfilled, they're all good to go. You turn on that setting and it automatically um, will, you know, go ahead and make these fulfilled, which is good to go. Um, now, the next thing that uh, I want to do on here with you is we're still inside the back end setup. Before we get to the one page lander, there's something really, really cool that people sleep on um, that I would highly recommend. So if you're using Shopify payments, then you can do this. If you're not using Shopify payments, then you can't do this. Um, so if you do have Shopify payments, I mean, it's kind of an advantage that you have. Um, if you don't have it, don't cry about it. Just use the card you're dealt. It doesn't make any use complaining, bitching about it. It don't, it don't help nothing. Um, but let me show you here for those of you that do have Shopify payments. So Shopify payments, what you can do, there's something cool called Shopify markets. So what people used to do is whenever they would, uh, you know, basically have a store and they're running traffic from, or they're getting traffic from multiple different countries, what they would do is they would use a currency converter app and it would just convert the currency on the store, like on the, the number on the outside, but they couldn't check out in that currency. Currency converters never worked out perfectly. It was just kind of always like, uh, never great. Um, and now with Shopify markets, you can do this in a way where, if you set up your store in US dollars, like this store is in USD, and I have someone visit my store from Canada, what I can have this do is immediately it'll show them the price in Canadian dollars, but also now Shopify allows for this to happen where they can then check out in Canadian dollars. And this is very helpful for, for some different countries that are going to be on your store. Um, what happens is, you know, they, they have uh, like payment methods that can only pay with these certain payment methods. So this is a way like you can really, uh, you know, make sure this is good and, and clear and straightforward. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's literally a cheat code. It's, it's amazing. So if you go to markets here in settings is where you'll be able to do this. So I've already uh, done some of this just as a test. Um, but essentially how it works is, let me just, let's say, for example, I'm going to remove market. This is Australia. Now I recommend doing this for the top five countries like United States, um, Canada, New Zealand, UK, Australia, you can set it up for those. Um, and then if you wanted to do any other ones, you just have to do it manually, like country by country, because it doesn't do this automatically. I think that would be cool if it did all of them automatically, but it doesn't. Um, so, um, yeah, you want to make sure you do that. Now, also another thing that's going to happen here when you set this up at first in Shopify markets is you'll have to install this free app called geolocation by Shopify. Um, so I believe actually I can show it here. <clears throat> It'll go under store. So if I go here to customize settings, is it on here? Maybe it's not on here. I guess I turned it off. I thought I had it on here, but I thought I, I guess I uh, turned it off. But let me check here actually. Oh, geolocation. This is a free app. It's made by Shopify, and you'll want to use this. All right, now I see it. I forgot. It's not in the customized store. It's in the geolocation app, but it looks like the customized store. So what this app is, it allows for it basically to do this conversion. And this is what's going to pop up by default when you first install this app. And you need this for Shopify markets, but when you first set up the app, it's going to have this like default, but I don't do this because it says, you know, get shipping options and we aren't shipping anything. It's all digital. So I don't, I just don't want this to show. Um, and I don't think it's needed anyways, even if, even if it didn't say that. So I just turn this off. I keep on selectors. So that way on the bottom, people could manually select if they need to, but usually Shopify does a good job at, at making sure this is all good and clear. Um, but yeah, that's, that's that. And then you go back here, we'll go back to markets. Okay, and I'm gonna click add market, and let's say, okay, I'm gonna do Australia, All right? Let me search here, Australia, add market. And now what I've done is I've just added this market, and here's the cool thing. I can customize this. So you could also add this, Shopify translate and adapt. So now, not only are you changing the price, but the store will translate depending on what location is seeing it. Pretty cool stuff, Australia. Pretty sure they speak English, or do they speak Australian? Anyways, 
Now what you could do too is change the price. Now it automatically does this to kind of round it up and make it cleaner, but um, you could literally, I mean, you could do this whatever you want. You want the pricing to go up, down, whatever. I've always left it default just to make it clean, um, but sometimes it'll be charging a little bit more or less depending on it. Um, and, you know, it's kind of a way to make it clean because if, if I sell something in USD for $20 and in euros or pounds, it's, you know, a random number with cents. We don't want that. We want it to round up. We want it to be clean. So like this right here is set to round it up, uh, you know, to the round up to one British, <laughs> let's say British, Great Britain pound. All right. Cool. Once you do Shopify markets, that pretty much covers all of this backend setup for right now. And now we can get into one page lander, which is how we actually structure it. So um, basically I had a student the other day, he asked me, cause I, I showed this and he said, yo, Tanner, what's the difference between, like what are the, the differences between doing a, a custom landing page for your digital product versus a normal product page? What are the pros and cons? And here's what I, I told him. I basically told him, um, hey, you know, the pros of a, of a landing page is that, you know, it's, it's a way to get a higher conversion rate. Uh, and everything's focused on this one product. And the pros is that you can customize it however you want. The cons of this, and what I'm about to show you is that, um, you know, if you've never done this before, it's gonna be kind of complicated. And another con is that there's a lot of different pieces. So if you did this yourself without the right, you know, blueprint, then this could very well not work out well for you. And you'd be like, Tanner, why is this not converting? But I'm gonna show you like a, a proven way right now that we use for most of our clients that we make these custom landing pages for. Like basically for students, if they want, they can pay us a thousand bucks and we'll make a landing page for the product. Um, and this is what we've, we've done and, and proven out by actually running traffic through these uh, and making sure that it actually converts. Um, but now like to talk about a normal product page, like, yo, Tanner, if I just did a normal product page here on this theme just by like default and I just use that, what are the pros and cons? Well, the pros is that it's easy, right? It's, it's very easy to set up um, and it's like, it should be a proven product page. The con is that it's kind of a similar thing. Like a lot of people are using the same exact thing and you can't really customize it. You can't really, you can't do what you want to do with it. Um, you know, to, to really customize it, to be like a funnel. Um, so that's the cons of it. So I'm going to show you now the harder route because I want to show you just more so like what, what I prefer to do, what I've gotten results with, and you can replicate if you want. Um, and that's what I would advise. That's what I would advise if you, you want to do this right and, um, you know, get the results with it. So here's what we are going to do. What we need to do is get gym pages. Gym Pages is another Shopify app that allows for you to fully customize your, your website however you want it to be. Um, you can get this for free to start out, which is great. Just go ahead and do that. If I go to apps here, I already have Gym Pages Builder. Um, and it's kind of like a drag and drop software that helps you with building pages for your store. And what I want to touch on here is just, you know, basically why and how. Because I think when you're first starting out with just one simple digital product, the best case that you should follow is just not having distractions. Many people think they need to have a blog about us, contact, tracking, all these different pages on their store. But in all reality, what's going to be best when you're starting out is just having traffic direct to you know one place specifically so that people can't get distracted. Because someone could be interested in a product and they go to your about page and they're like, this thing looks fishy. I'm not buying it anymore. I don't like this. But instead, if we kind of blend everything all into one page that they could just scroll through on their computer, on their phone, whatever device, um, then that's going to be the thing that you know will have the highest likelihood of actually uh, converting into a sale. So whenever you have gym pages, then what you want to do is go over here to create new page. And what this will do is just open up like a blank page. Uh, like I recommend just click start from scratch. All of these are different templates. I'm going to show you mine. Um, but there's a lot of different things on here. And now look, whenever you open this up, there's literally going to be nothing on here and you're going to be like, what the hell? But just mess around for a second, like spend, spend five minutes, just dragging and dropping. Cause you'll notice there's a lot of different variables, a lot of things you could change. So if I went back and I'm like, Hmm, I want to add a button right here. Okay. Well, what if I wanted to make this wider? Okay. Well, how am I going to do that? Oh, I got to scroll through here. Um, should I stretch the button? Oh my gosh, the whole thing is a button now. I don't want to do that. All right, maybe I could just increase the font. Uh, I don't know, it's kind of working. Maybe I want to just, you know, 
make the padding a little bit uh, better. So maybe that is that this, is that this? Nope, that's adding the outside. So how am I going to go ahead and do this and make everything just much better? Well, you know, that's what you're figuring out. You're messing around on here. And you're basically just looking for, uh, you know, just a little bit of experience, right? Like just mess around with it, like that, like what I just did. Like that little experience right there, like you're gonna experience a million things like that uh, when you're just starting out with this. And But just some things to kind of like uh, show you before I go through the actual full built page is that when you do this, the main thing that I want you to, to realize right now is that when you're setting these things up, you're setting it up by starting with desktop. That's what I want you to do is first desktop. Everything you add is gonna be for desktop. And then is when you can start to clean things up for mobile because here's what's gonna happen. You can adjust this directly for mobile. So let's say this is my desktop. I want it to look just like this. What about for mobile? What if for mobile I don't want it to be this big? All right, I'm gonna change this to mobile and I'm gonna make this version smaller. So now when I go to desktop, it's still gonna be the big version. When I go to mobile, it's gonna be a small version. If I go to desktop and I say, okay, um, here's what I wanna do, left. On mobile, no, center. So just understand that, okay? So now that you understand a little bit of like, that's, that's like the main thing I want you to understand, uh, we can go into the actual, actual structure that I recommend here for you for your landing page. Uh, and I'm gonna break it down here just like with a, a little example so you can kind of see what I'm talking about here and what I'm doing. So this right here is an example. This is, uh, just, this is a, an ebook I made like over a year ago. Uh, it's called the ChatGPT Product Factory. It's talking about how to use ChatGPT to uh, create uh, an ebook. And, um, you know, I never push it that hard. Nonetheless, this is just like an example. If I was building a, a landing page around it, this is kind of the structure, the template that I would use. And we use the same thing for other digital products. Uh, so that's why I want to, to show you this one. But you'll notice that right here, there's, there's not a ton going on. Um, it's actually quite simple. So I want to show you, like, you could do this. It's actually maybe not as complicated as you might think. So here's a cool thing to think about. Um, all of these different things in here are elements. And you can see in mobile, it's a little bit different. These things are centered. It's just a little bit cleaner. All right, desktop brings it back down to, you know, this version here. That's because each of these things is just adjusted for either the desktop version or the mobile version. But after you build the desktop version is when you then optimize it for mobile. So what are going to be the first things to change? I really just want to explain these sections and then you can basically copy the structure for your own product and your own niche. Um, but everything is pointing to the product essentially. And the very first thing that I do is build this, this banner right here. So this banner at the top is an end outcome statement. Now, by the way, some people go in with their digital products, they make black backgrounds. I think that's one of the worst things to do. I don't think it converts well. I don't like the way it looks. I don't think it's good. It's always best, in my opinion, to go ahead, do a white background, and then do colors for your buttons and everything else just based upon uh, your brand. So if I'm doing the Boss Babes whole thing, you know, that would probably be some pinkish, darker kind of colors that I would be using across that. Um, since this, for example, just had blues on this mock-up, and I wanted to just put some, some blues across it. Um, so the end outcome statement at the top is basically just to state what is the, the end outcome that the customer could receive? Like, what is the ideal scenario? We want to remind them of that. So if this product is teaching how to make an ebook, you know, with uh, ChatGPT, then, you know, this end outcome statement is probably something like build profitable ebooks in minutes using artificial intelligence, right? Like, that's, that's a possible end outcome statement. And that's what the people would want. So we want to remind them by that when they get on here. And then you see the product function. So one thing with products right now and product pages is... The super long descriptions aren't the thing to focus on right now anymore. The thing to focus on is just having, you know, a few different bullet points that focus on the main pieces, uh, you know, behind your product. And think about objections. Like, what is someone going to be wondering? If they see this product or they see this store, what are they going to be wondering? Is this a real book? Is this an ebook? Okay, I can break that objection. What is this actually going to teach me how to do? Okay. Who is this for? Okay. You know, you're basically just building these bullet points on what the product is and who it's for. You like everything is just pointing back to these main things, specific product for a specific audience. Okay. So keep that in mind. And after this is where you build a little bit of relatability. So I build a row here where you say, you know, a statement that, that kind of touches home with them. So 
you know, the type of person that would probably use this product is maybe they feel like they're missing out on the AI revolution. So you can ask here, if you like you're missing out on the AI revolution, this text would be something that just kind of, you know, relates to that. Like, oh, you know, like, um, it's super common for people to underestimate the power of ChatGPT, artificial intelligence, and how that can be applied to their, uh, the business that they want to start. It's probably not as hard as you might think. In fact, there's a proven way to, you know, do this actually relatively quickly, right? Then that's when you lead back in here. You lead back with the product, unleash the power of AI today, getting here into, okay, this is what it is. This is how it works. This is a little flip GIF I made, GIF, GIF. Um, I forgot the name of this website I used it on. I, I've, they wanted to like, I think, charge for me to download it. I just did a screen recording and then turned that into a GIF. Um, pageflipper.com, I don't know, something like that. Um, anyways, next thing, how it works. Like how it works is just explaining, because remember, I told you that for your digital product, like an ebook, if it has a specific outcome, which it should, you know, taking someone from point A to point B, you need to outline what are the steps that are gonna get them there. So the product should not be angled as just a bunch of information, but instead steps that get them to the specific outcome. And that's where you would kind of outline these here. Then you go back, product again. Here's what you'll need in case your product requires anything else. You know, people are going to wonder if it's the boss babes thing and, and you're talking about how to, um, you know, for them to, to make some side money as a virtual assistant from home. All right, well, what are they going to, are they going to, am I going to have to spend money to, to make money first? Am I going to have to, like, do I need a degree? Do I need, like, People in their head, you just have to think about it. You have to think, what are these people going to be thinking they might need? People that come to me and they were like, they want to learn about digital drop shipping. Uh, do I need a bunch of money for ads? Do I need a, do I need a laptop? Some people ask. Uh, bro, I, I've literally had someone like do this from their phone. Like they, they try to do everything from their phone. Like I guess technically you could, but fuck that, to be honest. I recommend some type of computer or laptop. It's just going to make your life a million times easier. Uh, so save up some money and do that. Don't just do it on your phone. That's going to be hell, to be honest. You're never going to know how to optimize the desktop version of your, your landing page. Um, anyways, after that, frequently asked questions. So similar things, you know, frequently asked questions. You basically compile all this information because the thing is people aren't going to go through here and they're not going to read everything. Uh, they just aren't. Like that's just part of the game. So that's why bullet points to really focus on whatever the, the main highlights of your product and what it does here. Um, and like if you go to a website like Tabs Chocolate, so that's a pretty cool brand and they push a ton of volume. Uh, for like sex chocolate and you know the bullet points they have there on the main homepage are you know like exactly uh, pointing towards whatever the you know those those things are actually I, I mean I'll just bring it up here real quick and uh, show you this because I think it's a it's a great example no I don't want that let me go here and I'll bring this down all right oh wow they got a new one introducing pink cherry tabs Ooh. Not even no, but look at this. This is what their their bullets heightens pleasure and euphoria, amplifies emotional connection, enhances central drive and performance. Like I, I love this product, this chocolate because I'm like this is like the um, Feastables but explicit version. Um, because like you're tying into like people love candy, people love sweets, people love chocolate. And now you're tying it into desires. People want to you know be fucking better. You know. Um, so, like, you know, they, they did a good thing like that. Good, good on them. I love it. Um, anyways, back to the lander. I'm getting a little distracted over here. Um, those are the main, main, main things that I focus on putting here. So that way, everything is just structured here for the one-page lander. Everything points to the product. Um, and, you know, then basically you just want to publish that, though, as your homepage. Because um, what will happen here is probably if you're setting up your first page, It'll probably publish this as a like just a product page instead of a home page. But what we want to happen is when someone goes to to your your website in general, we don't want a home page and the product page to be different. We want everything to be there. So when you first do this, it'll probably make it as a landing page. Um, so then what you want to do is if it's a landing page, you do here, you do change page type, uh, and then you turn it into home page and confirm that, and then publish it. And that way, whenever you go to your URL for your store, it's going to go to that lander no matter what so that way you don't have to worry about the product page and making your home page none of that it's just going to go directly here um you know to the home page itself um now 
I guess just some some last things here for back end setup, final setup for your store. Because remember, we're not playing perfectionist. We're not overcomplicating things. The entire objective is how can we just get this done and start marketing so we can make decisions? Because everything else, if we worry about the colors and the fonts and all this stuff, are shuffle actions. Shuffle actions are things that most new entrepreneurs fall victim to where they think this is going to be the best, that they should do this, they should do that, and focus on the color and this and that. But we don't know. If we, if we test two different colors of a logo on the website, we don't know if that's going to affect the conversions because there's not even traffic going to the store. So all we're doing by going back and forth in it now in our head and thinking, is this right, is this wrong, is wasting time because we don't actually know until we start marketing, until we start getting traffic. So the best thing we can do right now is just build the first foundation, just get something done, something there, so that we can then start marketing to get traffic to it, and then you know go from there. Because everything I'm showing you here, individual skill sets, everything's building up to come up to this piece of the puzzle. And that's what I, wanna, I want you to remember too as well as we keep moving here is that you know this is not something that's like you're just going to be crushing it in a week, in a, in a month probably even, probably maybe even two, three months. Like, the one thing we can't control is the outcome. The only thing we can control is the inputs that we, we put in. So if you follow my instructions, if you stay consistent and working on the things I tell you to work on and you stick to a plan and you don't compromise, then you will get a result at some point and it will work out. But you have to be willing to work without seeing the result at first. And you know that's why I don't, I don't want to be here and promise you could do this in a day, you could do this in a week, you could do this in a month because you know the reality is my people do it in all types of different times. But you know... I, I, I just want you to get your first sale right now. That's, that's really all I want. You can, you can actually do that uh, in not a very long time frame, to be honest. That is the one thing that I, I will say. Um, so now, what is going to be next? Well, we made the, the landing pages, the home page. Um, I guess next thing here could be, let me go out of this, and do this. <clears throat> next thing we could do, online store. You can go to pages. One thing you could do is create a um, contact page. So if you go here, add page, and you want a contact page, oops, you can go here, change this to contact because every theme has a, a default contact page. So let's say I, I save this and I put this here. It'll look like this, and every theme has a different contact page, but it's just something default so you can have that on your store as one of the navigations so it, you do have a contact page out of anything um, because, you know, maybe people want to contact you after they buy or maybe before they buy. But uh, also one thing I'll say, when you do this and you set up your store at first, there's a bunch of bots and, and things out there that are going through and submitting things like for lead generation into these contact forms by default. So if you get an email like, oh, we can make you 50 sales, um, let me know if you want to do this. Like, it's a bot. They're doing like a reach out strategy, and it's probably not, uh, you know, what you want to go with. I never recommend people to outsource things that they don't know how to do themselves uh, first. You know, at least one time. That's why I don't just tell you guys go spend, uh, you know, hundred dollars and get your digital product made uh, by someone else, or you know, do this with your content or your ads. Like, I want you to learn and know how to do it first. That way, you you know the skill set. Um, and if you do end up outsourcing and hiring someone in the future, you know if they're doing a good job or their bad job or a bad job, uh, and you won't be left in the dust. Many people will try to outsource everything to start, and they wonder why it's not working. They just trust the person that they they are the expert and they have the best interest, but most of the times that doesn't work out. Um, so once you made this kind of page, go over to navigation, and now we can actually just set up the navigation, which is actually pretty simple. So uh, main menu could just be something like this: your product. So let's say product name here. And you could just do this to home page because now your home page is the landing page. And then you could just do a contact page. That's it. And you just go to pages, you choose your contact, you add, you save menu, and now this thing is good to go. Um, so everything so far here is, I mean, pretty, you know, simple. It's, it's all done now. The, I mean, the only last things I can think of as far as actual setup are going to be your things like your logo and your actual store domain. Um, cause I guess we haven't really covered that. So, uh, your logo is you add here and you go to customize store on your theme here, and then you can add the logo, um, you know, up here at the top in logo and add it. So then it'll be good to go. You can make a logo in, in Canva, whatever, but I recommend don't make it fancy. Literally just use like text, text, text logo with specific font. That's what I recommend. Um, and then domain, I always recommend dot coms. But if you go into, I believe it's in settings now, settings, 
then you go over to domains, and then you could add your domain and do all that good stuff there. But uh, whatever you get, get it in a dot com. Just keep it keep it nice and simple. Um, it's honestly not a, a very complicated thing. Don't overcomplicate it. Don't make it more uh, time consuming than it needs to be. It's something that can always be changed. Everything we're doing can be changed, modified, improved, etc. We're building the foundation so we can market, make our first sales, improve on what we need to improve on, and then move on from there into you know turning this into a, a more you know profitable and somewhat passive thing that is is making you money when you sleep. That's what I want to happen. Um, so with that being said, that is the video here for day four store. We didn't really fill up the page too much here. I know it was a lot of just showing you guys um, examples and showing you the steps on here. So. Uh, I hope this one gave you a ton of value, and I hope you found it interesting. And, uh, you know, I would love to uh, you know, continue helping you however I can. And I'll see you in day number five. Tomorrow, organic content. And I'll leave it at that. AI. All right, that's, a, that's the last sneak peek. All right, I'll see you tomorrow, guys. Peace.